Hello everybody, today we'll be using the new tab bar that's available for iPad in iOS 18 and iPadOS 18. Uh, this is a tab bar with not only a new look and feel as you can see here, it's an overlay on the top and not a bar on the bottom that occupies vertical space, but also something that can be transformed into a sidebar. Besides that, we'll be creating a new section where we can drag stores the stores would also be able to be removed with a swipe action or with a tab section. We'll also enable customization in our sidebar and tab bar. The only change that we have done so far to our project is making it support iOS 18. That's the deployment, the deployment target and nothing so far. Here we have our reminder what the application is in iOS 17.4. We still have the original tab bar with different tabs, one for the order, another for the feed, and another with the maps for the stores. So let's just run in an iOS 18. In this case, it's an iPad OS. Now let's bring the other one and you can see the difference. So we already get for free the new appearance of the tab bar, which is here, and nothing changes here. We have the order, the feed, and the stores. Now let's update our project. So we go to our tab bar view. We're still using the old tab view where we declare the view tab view and inside we declare the sub views and added a tab item modifier. We can change that to use the new tab. In the first one, we're gonna have the title. So that will be our feed. And then the system image. Then we open the closure and we put in the view. That's the change. Let's do it for the other two. Let's do more. So now our tab view style will be sidebar adaptable. And here we will have a difference. Now notice we have now a new section here. Once I open it, my tab bar becomes a sidebar. And here I can normally change uh, between this. I got that. What other things can we do with this powerful new tab bar? We can customize it. So let's add, first of all, an app storage. This is just so I can save my customization. I am not going to worry about persisting it, but we need it to, well, yeah, to support the customization in the tab bar, in the sidebar, sorry. So I'm gonna have this tab view customization. We add the storage there. And we can add it here, the tab view customization. Another thing I need is to add this customization to the other uh, tab items, but the behavior will differ. So let's bring up the simulator. What I want to do is I want the user to be able to move around other tabs, but not the first one. So this feed section here, it will stay there and they can reorder well, the other two. For that, I'll use customization behavior in here. For the first one, it will be disabled. I'm gonna say it's disabled for the sidebar. For those that are customizable, I need to add a customization ID. Oh, I forgot to do it. Yep, see this error we have here? We have, it says that we have customization enabled. My error here is that it should have been disabled for both sidebar and top bar. Let's run again. So we remove that error. No, we don't get an error. Here, when I go to the sidebar and I click edit, notice that feed, we cannot do anything. And order and stores, I can control their visibility. So what we're gonna do is that stores is no longer just going to be a tab for stores. It's gonna be a tab section. Our tab that used to be stores is now going to be a map. It will also have a customization ID. And in this 
this case, let's have it disabled for the sidebar. I do not want to remove this visibility. Why? Because this in this tab section, what we're going to do is we're going to have a map of our stores and a map of our favorite stores, not a map, and a list of our favorite stores. If the tab section has all of the items not visible or empty, the tab section will not appear. And what do we have here? So let's add a state here for the stores. And what we want to do is the user, if they have a favorite store, we will allow them to drag and drop that store to the sidebar. after our map that will be our first item and then we'll have it for each with the list of stores and we're gonna add for each store a tab they already have a title on the phone. And the system image, I believe they don't have an icon, so let's add one. And we have, yeah, we have already this. Again, this is already, let's go back to the simulator. What I'm going to show is, let's go to the detail, pretty much this. Whenever we tap, we go to the detail of our favorite store. Because we are customizing them, we also need this to, to have a customization ID, which will be the store item.id. Let's see if our section is visible. Check here. Um, oh, our orders were not visible. And we have our map. Now, how can we grab this store and drag it here? We have to configure several things. First of all, we need our tab section to be able to receive um, the stores. So we're gonna say, we're gonna have a drop destination for, again, store item is what we have also in our feed. For now, this is going to fail because store item doesn't uh, conform to a specific protocol. We can, the user can drag more than one store at the same time. And we're gonna open all of the stores. Now keep in mind, we're not going to do extra validation, but you should if you're doing a real project, we will be able to drag the same store over and over. However, that will have a very nasty error. First of all, in the for each, because the stores are identifiable by their ID. If I drag the same store more than once, this will conflict. Likewise for the customization ID, since I'm using the store item ID, it will also conflict, so just keep that in mind. This is the first one. So yes, store item doesn't conform to transferable. We can fix that. Before that, let's make our store item draggable. I believe that is in the feed section. Oh no. This is here, but we do need to make something codable. We'll use this later. And let's go to our store feed section. Yeah, this one here. And our store cell, this is the one that will be draggable. If we can declare. In order that the payload, what's gonna be the payload when we drag this item? Again, here in the store, in the store cell, we have the store item. And again, it's gonna fail because store item is not transferable. So let's deal with that. I believe store item, one. we're gonna add an extension for our store item. And it's gonna be to conform to the transferable protocol. We could do it in another file, but I don't wanna create a new one. And because we're doing all of the transferable stuff here, then yeah, let's do it here. This is going to fail because it doesn't conform to transferable. We just need to specify one static variable, which is this. So the transfer representation, which is how is this going to be represented when we're dragging and dropping items. Oh, this is, I need to import the necessary thing. So it should be 
here go. And here we have the ID. This is just the ID that I am making up since the app is the only one that's going to be dragging stores. I'm just going to add it here. We, if we wanted to interact with other apps, we can either conform to one of the common types like PNG or other stuff, or just expose documentation so other apps can import stores to my app, but we're not going to do that. Since we are exporting, we want to transform our store item to data. That's why I made it codable. So we will use a JSON encoder, encoder to encode our store item. And that will give us data. Now here's the reverse. Given the fact that we have data that was important, we need to transform it into a store item. So we're gonna use a JSON decoder to decode store item from the data. And this is all that was required for our store to conform to transferable. If I build, I believe I won't get an error here. Good, but we're not ready. If I were to run, I will get an error in the console, just like we did for our customization ID, because our app is not declaring in their info playlist that we can accept this type, this new type that I created. I can fix that. If we go to our info playlist, can add a new row. Thing that we conform to export a type for identifiers. Now I'm gonna tap enter here and close this. We'll go to our project and in the info we now have a much more friendlier UI to add these types. Let's run and see what happens. Okay, we have our stores, our order. Even though we have stores not being in tab section in in the tab bar stores will take to the map. I guess it's because it's the first one. Let's go back to the feed and let's grab the spine store. And here we are, what we're dragging. And let's drag it to our section. There we have the pine store. Let's click on this. All good. Let's try dragging another one. here and there we have we have the post store the pine store our map and our feed once we edit we can reorder every single one of our tabs and same plus here we can also reorder in the tab bar that doesn't change anything in our uh, sidebar once I go here, the change is there. Now, there's one more thing. I added favorite stores, but what about when I'm tired of those stores? There's one more thing we can do for these uh, tabs in the tab section, and it's add swipe actions. So in our store view item here, we're gonna add a swipe action. Oops. Swipe action, we can specify the edge, so we're gonna do it in the trailing. Mm, yeah, we could do it. So another thing we can do here is if we want to allow full swipe for the action to complete, we're gonna say yes. And we can have the content here. So we're gonna add a button. It's gonna be delete. The system image to the button. It's gonna be the one of a trash can uh, feel, I think. It's gonna have a row. It's destructive. And here we have to execute the code. So Now there's another action we can do and it's what if I don't want any more any of my favorite stores? I I want to a clean slate. 
we can also do that by adding a section yeah section action i'm gonna just call it to removal Mm, yep, that's wrong. We have our removal. This is the action button. Let me first add one, add another one, and one more. Because we have all of our sections. I can swipe here and we have the trash can to remove it because we allowed full swipe. If I swipe all the way, we also have the removal and I can also tap the section action to remove them all. And that was all for today. With a few changes, we can move from the old sidebar, the old tab bar application to a more powerful tab bar that's capable of transforming itself into a tab into a sidebar and switch between the two. It even interacts with other sidebars, as you saw. They control the visibility and I didn't have to add a single piece of code for that. We can make the sidebar even more powerful by adding section actions, making content be able to be dragged onto the sidebar and adding swipe actions to interact even further with this item and customize the sidebar to my liking. Hope you liked the video. Bye.